Good morning, IPMG employee owners. I am um, just honored and blessed to start the day with you today. Um, hopefully everyone is on and ready to hear some great information this day um, and really find themselves leaning in more to this great company that we all help create and continue to make awesome every day. Um, you know, you can't get through this year that we've had and not uh, recognize there is a lot going on in the world. And so we're going to show you right now the agenda of what our day is going to look like together. Um, you will see there are some breaks built in, gift gals are visiting us today, um, along with we'll end the day with the state of the company address and the ESOP evaluation. And so there's a lot to celebrate. Um, but we felt it was really important. The first thing we do as we start this day is just, just take a moment take a moment to recognize all that has gone on um, in this past year, past couple of years, and recognize that we've lost individuals we serve, we have lost loved ones, um, and just take in a moment now. And so I'd ask you to do that, where you ever you are, to take a moment. Um, and as your CEO, I just recognize that each of you have gone through very different things this past year um, and we will pause now. I am going to turn this over to Lana. Um, to keep going. And I apologize, I didn't start by saying this is Karen Bremmett, your CEO. But I will turn the presentation over to Lana at this time. Thank you, Karen. This is Lana Hunt. I am the director of IPMG's Communication and Professional Development. And it is truly my honor to be able to introduce our keynote speaker, Chris Kegg. You may hear Chris Kaye's booming voice before you see him roll around the corner to greet you with a huge smile and an even bigger handshake. Like many influencers in the community, Chris wears numerous hats as the founder and CEO of the I'm Able Foundation, founder of Core Fitness, adaptive athlete, public speaker, and relentless advocate for the adaptive community. Shortly after graduating high school, Chris served his country in the United States Marine Corps for almost five years. He still remembers the words of his drill instructor, don't quit on me, Keg, which would serve as a beacon of hope and reassurance in the upcoming years. At the age of 21 in the, and in the prime of his military career, Chris was diagnosed with a rare degenerative condition affecting the myelin sheath of his nerve cells and was discharged from the Marine Corps. He began to walk with a cane, then two canes. With new direction and a don't quit on me attitude, Chris earned a business degree from Penn State Berks and began using his military style fitness regimen to train small and large groups. These training sessions and Chris's passion for improving the quality of life for those around him through physical fitness evolved into core fitness in 2004, head headquartered in Wyoming, Pennsylvania. Meanwhile, his condition continued to worsen and he soon transitioned to a wheelchair. Chris persisted with strength and resiliency and began competing in races and raising funds for medical research, which gave way to the newfound pursuit to assist other veterans and individuals with disabilities. In 2007, he launched the I'm Able Foundation with the mission to remove obstacles that prevent people with disabilities from being physically active by providing grants, resources, fitness opportunities, and motivation. His motto was simply, get up and move. He has developed programs like I'm Fit, a free fitness class for all adaptive children and young adults to practice the fundamentals of exercise together in a supportive and motivational environment. Operation Lead from the Front, a mentorship program which matches adaptive athletes with veterans in a relationship fostered around physical fitness and fun and Rally Point, geared around his passion for the trails, which joins the adaptive and able-bodied community on various level bike rides through the Berks County Trails and beyond. 
The I'm Able Foundation has also awarded hundreds of equipment grants to motivated and deserving individuals in the adaptive community. He has been able to accomplish great things with the support of his resilient and ever supportive wife and fellow trainer, Gretchen. Their rambunctious and lovable son, Carter, is a testament to the Keg culture. Chris Keg is an inspiration to everyone, able-bodied and adaptive, that he encounters, and he encourages them to celebrate the abilities they have rather than focus on those they don't. Chris, his family, his team, and his community believe that an active lifestyle is achievable for all, regardless of their abilities. And it is now my honor to turn the presentation over to Chris. Welcome, Chris. Hi, good morning. Uh, <laughs> stand by. <laughs> to my screen. Me, all right. There we go. There well, we good go. Morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So, uh, so happy to be out here. Thank you so much for uh, for including me in your day today, and uh, look forward to uh, um, just telling you a little bit of things that I've done to be able to help redefine possible. So, you know, uh, I kind of, I kind of, you know, want to make sure that you, you guys are all you know, doing the same thing that I'm doing, you know, you're really serving the adaptive community and, and really, you know, hoping, hoping to show people what, what is possible and not focus on the, uh, the things that are not possible. So, you know, I, I love the things that I've been able to accomplish. Uh, unfortunately, we're not, none of us are, are, are given a handbook on how to live this life and how to deal with the things that we're faced with. You know, we're all going to face challenges. We're all going to face different obstacles that we have to overcome. Um, but I, I was, I was very fortunate. Uh, a lot of my life experiences that I've uh, that I've experienced have really shaped me into the person I am now, and I'm so fortunate that I've been able to uh, to take the things that uh, happened to me and turn them into something that's very positive. So, you know, to go back uh, to, to the start, you know, I was, I was born born normal. I, I lived a very normal childhood. You know, had great great parents. I had six brothers and sisters, and just didn't really see anything. Uh, that was going to happen. And this is the kind of thing I think sometimes we get very comfortable with uh, the things that we have because we're not, you know, all faced with challenges at the beginning. Like there's, there's a lot of kids who are, who are born with things and they're, they're very resilient. I, I love seeing kids who, you know, have different uh, obstacles to face because they are the most resilient and the most uh, energetic, you know, kids out there because they've been living with it their entire lives. So for me, I, was very much normal. So I, I had a, a lot of things that I had to, uh, to to deal with when I was faced with my different challenges. So when I start, you know, oops, sorry. So, you know, everybody should, uh, you know, experience challenges. Cause I think the, uh, the challenges are what, um, you know, provides us the, uh, the insight as to what we can accomplish. So, you know, only when you're faced with challenges and you're forced to, to dig deep and find the strength to, uh, to uh, you know, to keep on moving, are you able to really understand who we are? And that for me was in Marine Corps boot camp. So uh, my dad, my grandfather, my uncle were all Marines. So I've been wanting to be a Marine since I was probably about seven or eight years old. Um, uh, had, had a great family and just loved Love the stories that they would tell me, and nobody in my family forced me to do anything, but they simply, you know, just show me the uh, the the motivation and the esprit de corps that they had for the Marine Corps. And ever since I was a young kid, I was very excited um, by the uh, the fact of being a Marine. So, lived a normal childhood, played football ever since I was probably about nine, ten years old. Very active kid, rambunctious, did all the things, you know, the stupid things that you know a lot of kids do. Um, Got, got in trouble and was very active and ran all over the place doing stupid things. But uh, unfortunately, when I when I uh, was in high school, I was very lazy. Uh, I played football, but I was uh, an offensive center and a defensive tackle. So I didn't need to be in shape, didn't need to be in, uh, in, in great physical condition. So I didn't do it. So um, when I graduated from, uh, from high school, I was 17 years old and went to Marine Corps boot camp in Paris Island. And if there's anybody uh, in the audience who's listening to me, if anybody's a Marine or knows a Marine, you, you know what Paris Island is like and you know how challenging it is. Um, but unfortunately, being 17 years old, I did not prepare myself. I did not get ready for the challenges I was gonna face going to Paris Island. Um, so 
I had, I had a, a big, big um, challenge in front of me that I had to overcome. So when I got to boot camp, I was probably about 225, 230 pounds, so a little bit, little bit chubby. Um, and when I, when I stepped on the yellow footprints down at Paris Island, that's when my life changed. Um, but the coolest thing was is that while uh, I was in boot camp, I really started to to, uh, to change my my thinking. I really started to think about my team because um, that that's what the uh, the military instills in you. You have to think about your team more than you think about yourself. So you know if there was challenges that we had to to go through or different obstacles that we had to uh, overcome, uh, if I would quit, then my team would have to pay for me. And I there was no way in heck that I was going to ever let my team pay for me quitting on myself. And, and that's that's a, a life lesson that I think has uh, has you know, pretty much stayed to this day. And I think it's been the uh, one of the biggest reasons that I've been able to overcome a lot of challenges because I I just never had that mindset that I'm going to quit on anything because I have a lot of people who are depending on me to uh, to make sure that I, I'm there to get the things done. So while I was overseas in uh, in in Aviato, Italy, you know, improvise, adapt, overcome. This is when the uh, those three, those three simple words that I learned as a 17-year-old Marine recruit came into play. And, you know, this is pretty simple. These are three simple words. And at the time when I was 17, I really didn't know what the heck that meant and really didn't know the uh, the impact that it was going to have on me. But again, we all have, we're all going to face challenges. So we have to just improvise, figure out a different way to do things um, and then adapt, implement those changes into your daily lives. And then the third one is overcome. It's simply moving on with no excuses. And that's that's been the, the way that my life is now uh, transformed. I do that all the time. Um, so two weeks after my 21st birthday, I was overseas in uh, Alviano, Italy. Uh, this was back this was back uh, back in the day. Um, and this was way before the wars that are going on right now. But I was overseas in Alviano, Italy. Went out for a run uh, to get ready for my physical fitness test with a friend of mine, and noticed that my 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 legs were starting to feel weak. I felt weakness in my hip flexors. I was I was tripping over my feet. I really had no idea what was going on. So when we did our physical fitness test, I went from running three miles in 20 minutes to running three miles in 26 minutes. So we we, we kind of knew something was uh, something was wrong. So I went to the doc and the doc sent me back to the States uh, where I spent nine weeks at Walter Reed Hospital in, in Washington, DC. And I was diagnosed with adrenal myelineuropathy. Um, it's unfortunately uh, my mom's gift to me and uh, unfortunately, my two younger brothers as well. So it's an X-linked degenerative disease that was passed on. And there was a, a head injury I had while I was in the Marine Corps that um, led to the early onset uh, of, the, of, of, the, of the disease. So uh, unfortunately, I had, to, I had to remember, I, I remember the day the doctor came into my room and told me my diagnosis. And honestly, at the time, I was relieved. I was relieved to know what it was after being in the hospital for nine weeks, getting spinal taps and getting blood drawn every single day and electronic stem tests. Um, so when, when he told me what my diagnosis was, I'm like, okay. So, you know, absorbed it a little bit, got my stuff ready for the gym, went to the gym. So I, I pretty much picked up and was, was prepared. But he said to me that I, I might be in a wheelchair in five years. And at the time, I was I was still walking around, so it really didn't really didn't make a huge impact on me. I really didn't know exactly what I was going to have to face um, later on. So unfortunately, my Marine Corps career was done. Um, so I had to uh, to come back to Pennsylvania and figure out what it is that I was going to do. Um, you know, went back to school, went back to Penn State, Berks, got my business degree, and then once I once I graduated, I had a hard time finding uh, somebody to, to to hire me. So I decided to hire myself. So in 2004, I started core fitness. So didn't get a chance to be a drill instructor, didn't get a chance to have my Marine Corps career go as long as I wanted to. Um, but now I had a chance to uh, motivate and inspire um, people to realize the, the, the abilities that they did have. And that that's something that the Marine Corps is what did for me. It made me realize how much more I could accomplish. Um, you know, but going back after I got out of three months of boot camp, I went from 230 pounds down to 180 pounds. So I had a whole different perspective on what I was able to accomplish. So those three months of the challenges that I faced and the uh, the obstacles that I had to overcome, it really um, really redefined to me what I was able to do and how much more I was able to accomplish if I just uh, put my mind to it. So uh, 2004 started Core Fitness and you know had people outside. You know, run, so that's my pickup truck. Started at the back of my pickup truck, just took people out to local parks and just wore them out as much as I could. 
Uh, and it was pretty amazing to see people who never worked out in their life and then they come out and they got the motivation and the encouragement from me and being around that uh, group mentality, you know, was able to really make, uh, make a lot of progress for people. And then 2000, uh, 2007 is when we got building seven. We had a you know 13,000 square foot facility, and we we're able to uh, you know go from having you know five to eight people on a weekend to now had over 300 people that came out to the, to the gym. So it was just an amazing community of all abilities that would come out and they would uh, work together as a team. Everything that I've done, I've treated it just like the Marine Corps. We're all working together as a team. You know, if one person fails, the other people are going to pick them up and make sure that we all finish the. Uh, Finish, finish the mission at hand. So he who has a why to live uh, for can, can bear almost anyhow. And this is a quote that is is definitely has resonated with me very much because you know I've I've dedicated my life to the service of others and seeing the uh, the people in my gym, you know, seeing the, uh, the the benefits of all the things that they were doing because of of, of my direction and my encouragement um, it was something that was so fulfilling for me to be able to see the uh, the benefits of my actions. So this is the, uh, the things that uh, I really now um, focus on with I Am Able Foundation. The I Am Able Foundation is my nonprofit that I started back in 2007. Um, and now I wanna try and provide people with uh, the, the ability to get out and redefine possible, to realize how much they can accomplish, you know, to be able to, uh, to see that they still have a lot of abilities. So this picture right here is, uh, is me on my mountain bike. I mountain bike you know, at least three, four days a week now, now that it's actually finally spring it's getting a little bit warmer, um, but it gives me the opportunity to get out. Right now, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the technology that's available for the adaptive community is absolutely amazing. You know, if this was back 30, 40 years ago, there, there was no way in heck any of this stuff would, would be possible. So I, I really feel fortunate to have my disability now when there are opportunities to get out there and do the things that, you know, everybody is doing. And this is something that I try to now, you know, provide that same um, opportunity for everybody else. Because as most of you, I'm sure know, that being disabled is not cheap. You know, that bike right there cost about $9,000. So when I first started the I Am Able Foundation, I saw kids, um, you know, at a hospital that I was at, um, you know, on breathing tubes, feeding tubes, confined to chairs, confined to beds, and not able to live the same childhood that I, that I had. Again, I feel very fortunate to have the, the, the life that I did um, back when I was a kid, you know, got a chance to go out and do the things that every kid does. So I wanted to provide these kids now with that same opportunity to get out and be as active as possible because being, being active is something that's so rewarding, not only physically, but um, psychologically. To have a kid be able to get out there and ride with his friends, just like every other kid rides with their friends, was something that was uh, you know, pretty amazing for me to see. So the, this is, the, this is the, the life that I have now, you know, seeing all the benefits of the, uh, the, the things that I'm trying to do to empower so many people to get out and be as active as possible. And again, I'm a Marine. I, I, see, the, I see the benefits of being active. You know, I, I, I push myself every single day to make sure that I can redefine possible for myself. And now, you know, to be able to give those same opportunities to the adaptive community now that I serve. So the I Am Able Foundation, when we started, was providing adaptive equipment grants. Um, and for, like one of the first kids that I gave a, a, a cycle to, he was five years old. And to see a five-year-old kid come in, he came into my facility, did not know what this hand cycle that I was showing him was going to do. Um, but I got him on it. I gave him a little bit of instruction. He was a little bit apprehensive. And then all of a sudden, he started to get it. And then this kid, five years old, just started riding all over the place and just with an amazing smile on his face to see that he was able to still do something. Um, so we gave him a bike and that bike cost $1,900. And we brought you know, 20 other second and first graders um, with their bikes to be able to show Jordan that they were gonna ride bike with him even though he was different. And this is, this, this is something now that we're trying to do is we're trying to really you know, um, level the playing field make sure that everybody, every ability is gonna be treated just, just the same and you know, given the opportunities to get out there and do as much as they can. So if you look at these pictures right here, these are the people that we serve. And every day I have my challenges, every day I fall out of my chair or you know, do something that I, I hurt myself. But you know, when you have a why, when you have some reason that you need to get up and get out there and go, this is what makes you uh, overcome those obstacles. And this is my, my mission now. My mission is to be able to serve all these people that have 
actually things a lot worse than I do. You know, they have, you know, cognitive or uh, emotional challenges and I'm there to be able to provide them the tools so that they can get out and they can be as active as possible and they can be with me or with other people who are able-bodied to get out there and be able to help push them. So these pictures right here are just a just a snippet of all the things we've been able to do. Uh, we just celebrated our 15th year, um, which is something I'm so proud of um, because over 15 years, it's it's amazing to see the you know the, the stories that we've been able to create. You know, all the faces that I've been able to serve is something that really just warms my heart every single day and and reminds me of why it is that I do what I do. So this right here, you know, again. My triathlon, which back in 2004, um, I started a triathlon to raise money for nerve damage research. Um, and this was before I started I Am Able officially. And this race, we're actually getting ready to do our 19th annual coming up on May 21st. So this is another uh, another uh, thing that I'm very proud of that we, we've been able to implement and now provide an opportunity for both adaptive and uh, uh, able-bodied athletes to be able to compete in the same form. So everybody comes out and swims, bikes, runs, you know, whether or not that's a, as a team or as an individual, they're out there to be able to, uh, to, to, to push themselves and see how much more they can do. So this is the, the kind of uh, the mentality and the, the environment that we're creating for so many people. L lastly, this I am fit. This is, this is where I thrive the most. This is where I get smiles on my face every single week. So I am fit. Um, I, so I owned a gym and I provided an opportunity and an environment for people to come out and be a part of that community despite their challenges. So this is this is a picture of, of the gym. So after a class would be done, um, there'd be a, a bunch of kids waiting out in the lobby, looking through the window, seeing all the people in there moving and throwing stuff around and you know, working out. And then they would come in afterwards um, to a big uh, big reception of all of us, giving them high fives, uh, making sure that they were so excited uh, to be to be there and, and to get something uh, um, that was going to push them. And this is something that there's a lot of disabled, you know, kids, disabled adults, you know, pretty much everybody in general. Um, there's a lot of people who don't push themselves and that don't work out and don't really see the benefits of it. They don't they don't enjoy it. And this is something that I'm very proud of that we're we're able to provide an opportunity for these kids to be excited about being active. Um, you know, look at, look at all these faces. You know, if, you, if you're having a bad day, come out to one of my classes for an hour because you will not leave without a smile. You know, I get, I get more hugs. I do handshake contests with everybody, high fives. And it is the most amazing night because they are just smiling the entire time. And a lot of these people, they have Down syndrome, cerebral palsy, spina bifida, autism, you know, a, a range of different challenges that they're, they're uh, facing. And they are still, you know, able to, to, to get out there and, and, and put a smile on their face and put a smile on everybody else's face. So all the volunteers that come out and that are part of this, they get something so much from being a part of that because it's, it's something that's very fulfilling for all of us. So I really would love to, uh, you know, talk to anybody from, uh, from your organization because I know um, that you guys are serving the same population that we are. You guys are serving it in a little bit different way than, than us. Every, every time I talk, there are so many people that do not have this in their communities. So if anybody's interested, I would love to uh, to figure out ways that we could do, um, you know, some sort of uh, uh, chapters or anything that we can uh, serve in the communities that you guys serve. And while, while I am a, I'm a Marine, I'm a veteran, I, I really believe in the benefits of things that we can do as veterans. You know, we have a, uh, we have a, uh, a, a big drive to be able to continue to serve, regardless if you're in or if you're out. And this is where the Operation Leave from the Front came. Because again, I, I feel so fulfilled every day, despite the fact that I have my challenges. And I want to try to provide that same opportunity to other veterans uh, and now first responders. So the Operation Leave from the Front was a, a program I started back right before the pandemic. And uh, it's given given people the opportunity to be paired up with our adaptive audience. So uh, Alan, he's a Marine in this picture, and I saw him at a baseball game. He was getting ready to leave because he's been battling PTSD for probably about four or five years. And I said, Alan, come out and uh, do an IMFIT class with us. So I brought him out to the class, and he met Robert. Robert, young man in this picture with the walker. He's got spina bifida. And I said, Alan, this is Robert. Uh, it's your responsibility to train him and get it done. 
and I just left him and it was amazing. For that hour, the instantaneous connection that they both had, Alan had, had an opportunity to train and to motivate this kid. And then, uh, you know, Robert was so excited that he was being trained by a US Marine. It was something that was an amazing opportunity. But once that class was done, I got a text from Alan and he said, that, that kid just saved my life. It was, it was something that was so, so amazing to see the instantaneous um, connection that we can make. And this is something that we're trying to, to really reinvigorate this program and get it out to as many veterans and law enforcement because you know, people who face challenges on a daily basis, they need to have that, they need to have that opportunity so they can um, feel appreciated for the things that they're doing and have a mission and have a, a reason for doing the things that they do. So this is something that I really think that this can be something we can do across the country. And there's so many people out there that would benefit both the veterans as well as the, uh, the individuals that, that, that they're serving. So again, there's so many things that I've been able to accomplish, um, but I'm just so happy with the way that um, my life has, has evolved. And I really think that this is probably one of the best things that ever happened to me. I really um, would, would give anything to have my legs back um, and have the, the the abilities that I had before, but I, I don't think that I'd be sitting here uh, doing a presentation with you guys. I don't think that I'd be able to do the things that I'm doing um, if this did not happen. So um, this is the kind of thing that I, I want to try to change people's perspective. And sometimes you have to look at challenges as a stepping stone and not use those challenges as a crutch. And that's something that I think that I've done. I've been able to use the challenges that I faced and I've been able to make it a positive and I've been able to accomplish a lot more without it. So you know, we're all gonna have those bumps. We're all gonna have those, those, those challenges that we all face on a daily basis. So please, you know, help each other out and work with your team. Make sure that you are there uh, for people. Some people have good days, some people have bad days, but you know, we're all able to, uh, to continue to move. So again, look at those, look at those challenges as, as your stepping stones and something that's gonna help take you to the next step and you know, really, um, show all the things that you were able to accomplish. Whoa. So um, I'm sorry, I think this is the uh, the time that I'm gonna ask you to play the movie that I uh, put to you. So Stephanie, I believe if you can please play the movie. And this, this, this is a movie we made for the I Able Foundation back in 2008. And it's something that um, is still uh, makes it makes it makes it makes me smile a lot, just because this 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 video shows all the different types of uh, disabilities that we're able to serve and to be able to show people what what is possible. So if, uh, if you can see some things in here, hopefully uh, hopefully everybody feels uh, a little bit motivated. Hopefully you guys say that there's a lot of uh, people in this video that are challenged, that they have different um, disabilities and different uh, obstacles that they have to face, and they're still getting out there and doing amazing things. So hopefully this can be something that um, you can look at yourself and, and find out what you can do better. But you don't succeed When you get what you want But not what you need When you feel so tired But you can't sleep Stuck in rivers And the tears come streaming down your face When you lose something you can't replace When you love someone but it goes to waste Could it be worse? Lights will
to let it go But if you never try, you'll never know Just what you finish up by saying i really hope this has encouraged everybody to get up get get out there get moving and uh, get after it i think this is a uh, a great time to be able to hopefully remind yourselves what is possible and what uh what abilities you do have and don't focus on the ones that you don't so thank you very much everybody i really appreciate um you guys all tuning in to me today and uh look forward to uh, any questions or anybody else who wants to reaches out reaches out to me um to be able to uh, um, look at any other opportunity we can provide Thank you so much, Chris. I would like to say that I had the privilege of hearing Chris speak at the National Association of Case Management Conference last year. And so I feel very fortunate, or we are very fortunate to have been able to have him speak to all of us. Also, there are several parallels, I feel like, between what you are doing and, and uh, your mission uh, along with IPMGs. We also just celebrated our 15th anniversary um, so we very much appreciate you taking your time today to share your story and what you're doing um, to support people of all abilities, um, just like we try to do every day. We do have a few questions, um, so uh, we have a, a couple of minutes. Um, so someone um, uh, wanted to give you a shout out because they are also a Berkton State uh, campus graduate. Um, so just a shout out uh, for that. Um, and um, have mentioned, um, and I think that uh, Chris, maybe um, we can connect um, after after this uh, in the next uh, few days because I know that there are several people that have uh, some ideas or some organizations in Indiana 
that you may be able to uh, reach out to and do some partnering with so we can share that. Um, is there a website? Do you have a website? And I think you shared that, um, that we could share um, as we're talking with other people. Yes, ma'am. I believe it was, okay. It's the IamAbleFoundation.org. So it's the letter I, the letter M, Able, just like the, uh, the spelling right here, IamAbleFoundation.org. Perfect. We will uh, get that out and, and share that, and then we can maybe uh, connect with you uh, next week and, and share some resources with you. Um, lots of thank yous for the uh, sharing your story and um, how inspiring it was. Um, someone you. has mentioned that they see your flag of challenge coins and want to know if you've adopted that with your classes. If I, oh, I, I definitely am a challenge coin uh, fanatic. Um, I, I, I team up with a, a friend of mine now, General Gronsky, and uh, very much about the uh, the challenge coins. So this is something that we definitely implement. A lot of the military uh, mentality that I have and the things that we do, you know, with, with all my classes. Um, let me see. Again, lots of people thanking you um, for sharing your story. Um, if anybody else has another question, we you can type that in and we can um, ask Chris that. Um, many people are saying thank you for being an inspiration. Um, someone else who was also at the conference with me um, said that they are happy to see you again and that uh, you were able to share this with us today. Um, I am not seeing any other questions right at the moment. Um, but if you um, think of any and you would like to share them with me, um, we can always reach back out to Chris and he can share um, some more information. Um, but again, Chris, thank you so much for joining us this morning and inspiring and um, motivating us to continue to do what we do um, to serve the individuals that we are privileged to support. Um, and we thank you very much and hope that you have a wonderful weekend. Thank you very much. And you know what? I'll just say this. I mean, first of all, it was it was a pleasure to meet a lot of people out in Vegas when I was out there, and to uh, to meet people with you know the similar uh, uh, goals that I have. Uh, it was it was great. And it was also uh, it was, it was un unfortunate that there's a lot of people who don't have uh, a lot of the services that I provide. You know, in my area. So I would love to talk to anybody about ways that we could do uh, things to team up to be able to provide the, the things that we're doing here in Pennsylvania, see if we can uh, spread these out everywhere else. So please don't hesitate to give me a shout, Chris at IMAOFoundation.org. All my information is on the website or or there's ways that I'm sure you can track me down somehow. So I look forward to, uh, to okay. talking to anybody. All right. Well, thank you so much. Have a great day. Thanks. You do the same. Mm -hmm.